And we welcome you back to Milan. It's Tyrell Biggs, 16-1 against Francesco Damiani, the Italian undefeated heavyweight, as they have a rematch from four years ago when Tyrell Biggs scored a decision win over Damiani for the gold medal in Los Angeles. But today, Damiani comes in with some pretty high credentials himself. He's undefeated against Tyrell Biggs, fighting for the first time in some 374 days, at least, in the ring. He's been sparring a lot lately, but he did take about a six-month sabbatical. Arnie, you've got to ask yourself about Biggs. We, we mentioned heart at the top of the show, but he did show a lot of heart. But right now, can he get back to where he was before Tyson after a year layoff? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I say absolutely, and I say one of the reasons I say absolutely is I watched a gentleman fight the other night who took an even longer layoff and had drugs to boot, and that was Michael Doak. So I saw him come in at 220 pounds the other night on our fight from the Fell Forum in Madison Square Garden, and anything is possible. Tyrell looks fit. He looks trim. Uh, this is a perfect fight for both of them. It's a turning point fight, to use the cliche. We'll see what happens. The winner, ready. The winner, of course, uh, is in line for a shot at Mike Tyson. But as we mentioned at the top of the show as well, everybody in the top ten is in line for a shot at Mike Tyson and waiting patiently, I might add. Round number one underway, of course, Biggs is sticker mover. And, of course, Damiani, more of a plotter, will try to get inside and work inside. Biggs has got a big frame coming in at 6'5", 217. Of course, the crowd will be very pro Damiani today. You can bet on that. A little more action than you might expect at this point in the fight. Normally, a testing out period here. Anyway, by the way, that was a split decision in the Olympics between the two of them. That's how close it was the first time around. So it comes down to who's improved the most the last four years. And right now, Biggs taking the fight to Damiani. Of course, Biggs can do a lot of damage from outside. He's got an excellent left jab, good movement, and some people say he's not as, ag as aggressive as he should be with, a, with his kind of size. Yeah, I saw Damiani fight Dorsey Gaiman in Atlantic City back in June, and he's put on some weight since then. Is it good weight? I, I don't believe so. Take a look at his middle. <laughs> yeah. Lou Duva told me that Biggs has looked sensational in training, so hopefully Biggs, after a six-month sabbatical, is back to very serious. His jab looks extremely sharp. Tommy Ani landing from long range, but Biggs going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him right now and keep, keeping that jab out there very effectively. And some people say in that fight against Mike Tyson, Arnie, that Biggs lost his game plan after the first round when he st stuck so well and moved, and then he tried to slug it out with Tyson. It's something you don't want to do. Surprised everybody. He won that first round, looked very sharp, was moving laterally and had a great jab. And not quite sure why he dropped the game plan at that point. Mike Tyson might have had something to do with it. Round number one of ten, the heavyweights, Tyrell Biggs against Francesco Damiani from Milan. Damiani getting some uh, nice little short right cross landing in there. He's done some decent work inside, but Biggs being sharper from the outside. The crowd cheering every Damiani. What about that crowd over there? Listen to that. They'll cheer him for spinning in the bucket between rounds. Twenty-three seconds ago in round number one of ten, heavyweight contenders Francesco Damiani and Tyrell Biggs. Damiani trying to get inside. So far, Biggs has been a little more effective from the outside. Ooh. Weekend Sports News. Of ten, Tyrell Biggs, Francesco Damiani from Milan. Score. And first round scoring, Arnie, uh, the crowd liked Damiani. Who'd you like? I like Damiani also, although it was very close. One thing I think American fighters have learned in the least uh, many, many years is to, to win on foreign turf, you have to be not just good, but very, very good and impressive and almost dominant to win a fight. Tell that to Pernell Whitaker. Damiani's uh, excuse me, big starting to get the range right now. That jab looking very good coming out here for the second round. 
the quickness certainly the quickness certainly in Big's favor and maybe a little strength factor might be in Damiani for now Damiani trying to get inside I might want to point out although if Damiani could win this fight oh, Damiani should win this fight he would get a shot at Tyson I seriously doubt that it means a, a, a quick rematch for Tyrell Biggs of course, the uh, Tyson camp would think very seriously, of course, a lot of money over there should he fight Damiani in Italy. That seems to be fueling who he fights. Between Frank Bruno and the rumored Addison Rodriguez after that, and Damiani, uh, possibly Hollifield, where you have uh, Witherspoon, Tucker, Carl Williams, all sitting in the wings, all ranked above these fighters. Damiani trying to turn it into a slugging match, and so far this second round he's landed some effective punches. As has Biggs, but certainly the crowd definitely uh, favoring the hometown, at least the home country man. Damiani, not a bad counter punch. You know, it, it's, it's quicker uh, hand speed than we thought, Arnie. That's going to have to be his fight. Uh, you, if you've seen him fight before, you know he's not going to win it on finesse. That's not his game. landing the, the heavier punches big showing a lot more movement but not as much aggression as he did in the first round a little under a minute to go right now round number two and another good round for francesco damiani Big throwing some wild lefts and rights, and Damiani staying a little more control here. Not, now showing not a bad jab. Not a nice left hook in the The finesse that he showed in the first 60 seconds of the round seems to have just gone away. Big trying to land that big overhand right. So far, the first two rounds, he's whiffed pretty much with all of them. The jab's been his most effective punch. Damiani's worked to get inside and landed some good combinations. Ten seconds left in the round. Round number three, Francesco Damiani, the Italian undefeated heavyweight against USA hopeful Tyrell Biggs, who comes in at 16 and one. That one loss, of course, coming to world heavyweight champ Mike Tyson. And the first two rounds, Damiani with the crowd. And how, how about the scorecard, Arnie? Well, oh, Damiani by a shutout at the moment. I thought uh, the way Tyrell came out at the beginning of round two, that he had, uh, as I mentioned, found the range, and he died for the last two minutes of the round. You know, Biggs has fought many times in his career, almost on the verge of losing. He seems to be motivated a lot of times by a tough fight and the fact that he's given away so much. A James Broad fight comes to mind when he was cut so badly and really had to rally in the late rounds to, to score the KO. Right now, he is uh, falling behind on the scorecard. David Biggs, excuse me. As I mentioned before, no problem in the heart, but it's going to be a hot tougher to come from behind in Milan than it is in Las Vegas. Nice left by Damiani, showing punching power with both hands. Now the left eye and Biggs looks to be closing slightly. Damiani really rallying here. Some good combination, very crisp. And showing better hand speed than uh, I thought. Yuri Biggs is, is fighting a fight now very similar to what happened in the Tyson fight. He's covering up. He doesn't seem to be getting off. Uh, his stamina doesn't seem to be there. And he seems to be catching. Damiani 
Syracuse. Everybody wants to get a good look at Damiani coming in with an undefeated slate. And the big question, of course, has been his competition. But if he would defeat well, Biggs today, certainly that would do a lot for his reputation. That's why. Right. Very refreshing still. Whoa. Tyrell Lungeon. John Coyle, the referee today, working uh, some fights, worked the Virgil Hill Rafino Angulo fight over in Paris, France, and you saw here on score. Excellent referee. Damiani trying to get inside, and so far he's done it effectively in rounds one, two, and now number three. You know, it's amazing how, how accurate he is, but the fact that Biggs is showing no movement right now. None. Damiani, not known for his jab, is, is, is picking Tyrell's face apart. Biggs, as we mentioned before, a lot of times he has to be pushed to the limit for, before he gets his act together, but right now Damiani has certainly taken a very much control of this fight. And I think it was a surprise to many people, including myself. Well, part of the problem here, you might want to think about, is that Tyrell's never fought a fighter this size. He's used to punching down. Yeah. And somebody ought to tell him to bend his knees a little bit. Because he's just standing straight up and taking these shots right on. He's never fought a man his own size, other than Damiani in the Olympics. A big Florida in round number three. A little of those two ingredients to his arsenal. And right now, Damiani, as we check the scorecard again, already looking pretty good. 3-0, and, and again, shades of Tyrell Biggs as he looked in the beginning of the second round. He's moving, lateral motion, up on his feet, good sharp jab, and we'll see if he can sustain it more than the first 60 seconds of the round. Again, if you're a dancing fighter, again, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, if you can't do that for the full three minutes, or at least a good two out of that three, it's not going to pay off for you. You can't do it for just the first 60 seconds of the round. And I think he did for the first 30 seconds here, and now yeah. he's standing still. Now he's Damiani catches him with a nice right cross, and back on his heels goes Big. You know, Big seems to be caught between what he should do and what he wants to do, and, and, and right now, he's not a slugger. He never has been a slugger, and he's trying to slug with Damiani, who certainly his game plan it is to get inside. That's the only plan available to Damiani because I think he's got limited resources. You know, impressively about Damiani is the fact that his punches are short for you. You know, he's not losing them. They're very tight punches and they're getting inside and getting some damage. I think eventually it's going to wear down Biggs unless he shows something there. The combination is being yelled from the American corner and, and really Biggs has shown little combinations. It's one and two stick jam and that's about it. On a wild left hand. The big showing a lot of aggression and now the punch is starting to land a little better. Important to point out, you, you know, where we talked about the top 10 heavyweights having fought each other and we finally have one, but it's a situation for Tyrell Biggs. It's his first fight back after losing to Mike Tyson and a real tough one. There's a lot of ring rust out there right now on him. And perhaps he shouldn't have taken a fight this tough on, on his first comeback. Damiani landing the big right over the, the glove and trying to just muscle Biggs into the corner. As we said, Damiani, a big man, coming in at 6'5". So certainly, as we mentioned before, Biggs always looking down, but today, a uh, uh, Biggs taunting Damiani to bring it on. And he does landing a big right hand, rocking Biggs, and Biggs standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Damiani. I think it was a far better fight than anything you thought it would be. Biggs is taking some tremendous shots. I don't know how much longer he can take these. Inside tech seconds of round number four. We'll come back with round number five after this. Three. And so far, the Italian undefeated heavyweight Damiani has shown a lot. And Biggs, after a very impressive first round of sticking and moving, has not shown a lot at all. Well, you, his right eye is looking like hamburger. It's bleeding. Uh, definite shades of David Bay and, of course, the Mike Tyson fight. The Bay fight, he was able to come back. Either this blood's going to wake him up and he's going to really start to take the fight to Damiani or it's going to be over real soon because that's a very nasty cut. The referee was over looking at it between rounds. It's in a bad place where blood's going to get into his eye and right now he wasn't fighting that well with two good eyes. If he's blinded in one side, Damiani's just going to pick him apart. As we see, Damiani continues to plod forward, and the first four rounds, uh, 
Now he's looking, now he's getting his confidence and he starts starting to wail wildly and landing on a couple of them. What's happening here? They're sending Damiano to the corner. They're having to bring it in the ring doctor to check out Biggs's eye. Same eye with respect to David Bay. In Milan, don't be surprised for the short quick whistle here. That fight's over. Fight's over. Damiano's throwing a fifth round TKO. About a minute in the round number five, and the doctor said that's all she wrote. So Damiano goes at 22 0 with 19 KOs. The winner by TKO and Tyro Biggs is at the three. Arnie has to go back to the drawing board for a long time. Well, you can't help but be impressed by Damiani's performance. Uh, at the same time, you've got to question uh, the management team of Tyrell Biggs. Is this a wise...